Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. It feels like it has been a very gloomy winter indeed, but in the last week, brighter conditions have developed at times. It certainly feels to me as though I've seen more sunshine in recent days than in recent months. Now, we are heading into March and the start of the meteorological spring, but the old saying is, March comes in like a lion and goes out like a lamb. Will that be the case this year? Well, let's see how things could develop. Now, here's a picture at 18 GMT on Tuesday the 25th. We've got the weather coming in from the west, from the Atlantic, so it's a fairly changeable or unsettled picture. As I run the sequence, we see outbreaks of rain, heavy ones push eastwards, they clear away to leave showery conditions, it stays fairly mixed. But then, towards Friday and into the weekend, high pressure begins to build. It's really asserting itself quite strongly, especially across southern and central regions. It's more mixed still in the northwest. Weather fronts there bringing outbreaks of rain. But as they try to push southeastwards, they're fragmenting and fading away. It's high pressure which dominates through the rest of the weekend and the early part of next week. Quite a significant change really taking place if this is correct. Here's the upper air temperature and jet stream sequence, the jet stream track shown by the mottled shaded area. It's the blues, particularly the dark blues, which are indicating cold air aloft and the yellows and oranges, warm air, green somewhere in between. As I run it, what we see is the jet stream steadily, it's not a linear progression, but it moves northwards through the week. And by the end, the high pressure is dominating, as I've mentioned, the jet stream to the north of the United Kingdom, the yellows and oranges there indicating significantly milder air in place. What does all that mean though in terms of the weather that we can expect down at the surface? Some charts first of all from the Met Office UK V model. These are for Wednesday. On the left maximum forecast temperatures so fairly close to the average I think and on the right the precipitation sequence it shows those outbreaks of rain Pushing eastwards, you can see some pink shade in there, particularly over northern Britain, so sleet or snow possible over the Pennines, maybe some over the uh, Welsh mountains there for a time as well. Forwards to Thursday and the showery conditions have returned to all areas. Quite a lot of bright spells to be found if this is right and temperatures not budging a great deal, still close to the average, so a little bit chilly in the north. Forwards to Friday, mostly dry now, the showers have faded away, but still temperatures hardly moving at all. Into the weekend, at this point the high pressure is starting to build and weather fronts moving down from the northwest are fragmenting as they push down into uh, northern parts of England, central areas as well. So they're bringing cloud southeastwards, but not a great deal of rain. Temperatures perhaps a little bit fractionally higher than in recent days. I think it's just worth saying as well that when I look through the data, the Met Office runs this morning tended to be at the lower end of the temperature predictions. It doesn't mean they will be wrong, but a number of the other models had values a degree or two higher, so it's something worth bearing in mind. And that's reflected by the uh, GFS charts here. These are for the next two days um, because the UKV doesn't go this far forwards. Double figures now, Sunday in southern and central regions, 11 degrees there. Still a few degrees lower in Northern Ireland and Scotland. Then by Monday we're seeing a spring-like values of 13 degrees. So the trend is upwards. And the other point to note though is certainly in the short term, the nights are looking quite cold. Thursday, Friday and Saturday, these are the overnight lows. Patchy frost, in fact, on Friday uh, morning, a widespread frost. It's on Thursday when there's more cloud in the south and the valleys are staying a little bit higher. Then on Saturday, it's the opposite way around. It's the southern and central parts of the UK, which are seeing the lower temperatures. But some of these values going dipping down to minus three, minus four. So we could see sharp frosts in places, certainly through the first half of the first week. The Mogreps G temperature plot for London just gives an idea of where things are going. Most of the runs there 
are very uh, much in agreement with each other. The lines are close together through the first few days. And also it's quite clear there's a nice diurnal pattern, the daytime highs and the nighttime lows. They're being shown quite clearly. That's not always the case. For example, we've got a lot of cloud overnight. You tend to see a flatter line appearing there because there isn't so much variance between the afternoon highs and the overnight lows. But just going forwards, even by the end of the first week into the early part of March, the spread is increasing, but it's not increasing hugely. It's suggesting quite a high level of confidence in the general pattern. Nothing too notable in terms of overnight uh, lows or daytime highs, fairly close to the norms. Up to Inverness, I just wanted to show this because there isn't a huge amount of difference. Um, even, so even in the essentially northern Scotland, values are of course a little bit lower than in the London area, but not massively so. So fairly consistent Pitch, a fairly consistent temperature, temperature, consistent temperature profile across the UK, a little bit lower as we head northwards, but not dramatically so, at least through the first week or much of it. Rainfall. These are the forecast accumulations for the first five days from the ECM and GFS models. The main difference is that GFS on the right has higher values in East Anglia and parts of Southern England. In large parts, that's probably due to how it handles developments through the first couple of days. That said, it's not particularly wet anywhere. Moving forwards to the 10-day accumulations. Totals have increased in Western Scotland, but not much elsewhere. It suggests that through the day five to day 10 part of the forecast period, high pressure will be having a good deal of influence. But in more general terms, do the deterministic models support that idea? Here is the GFS on Tuesday the 4th of March. High pressure building up from the south, very mild air starting to make its way up from the southwest. The Canadian model shows something similar. The German icon, high pressure maybe orientated a little bit differently, cooler air there over the northern half of the United Kingdom, but the broad scale picture is very similar. The European model, the ECM, similar once more, very mild air starting to feed up from the southwest. It would probably bring uh, higher temperatures in the days which were to follow. Finally, the UK Met Office Global, slightly different once more, but the general theme is similar, although the blue shading over the UK indicates somewhat cooler air aloft, and that very mild air probably further south and west than on one or two of the other model runs. It fits in quite nicely with, with what I mentioned earlier that the uh, Met Office runs were tending to show slightly lower temperatures over the UK for much of the first week than some of the other models. This type of thing could help to explain why that is the case. But taking them all together, as we head towards the end of the first week, the general picture is that high pressure centred close to southern Britain will be bringing a good deal of settled weather. Temperatures starting to rise at this point, more changeable conditions persisting there in the north, but particularly the northwest where the Atlantic is having more influence. It definitely doesn't look like March will be coming in like a lion this year, though, if these uh, model updates are correct, more like a lamb. Well, how do things develop as we head through the second week? Is it going to be a continuation of this general pattern? Of course, it is just about the trends and the probabilities at this range. Here's the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Upper air temperatures across the top are well above the average for through the first few days at least. The thick black line there is a 30-year norm. Virtually all of the runs in the ensemble are significantly above it for a time. There are one or two exceptions, but the general trend there seems to be fairly solid. The signal is quite strong. Although it's worth noting that later on, they are dipping back towards the 30-year norm. 
Rainfall, not too many spikes there at all across the bottom. In fact, virtually none through the first few days. It's, it's only through the second half of the second week where their number starts to tick up. It's suggesting a lot of dry conditions. That all looks fairly promising. Do the two meter temperatures respond to the upper level warmth? According to this data table, yes, they do. 11s to 15s through the days, indicated by the yellows in the columns, the most likely scenario. In fact, there's even a little bit of orange starting to show up. 16, uh, 16s to 20, so beer garden weather, I think some people might describe it as. Although it's important to note that the trend, despite that orange appearing, the trend is broadly speaking a little bit downwards through the second half of the second week with more light green starting to return into the daytime maximum column, so six to 10 degrees. The overnight lows, lots of light green, some dark green, and after decreasing, the dark green starts to increase once more later on. It suggests that ground frost is still a risk in Southern Britain through the second week. Up to Manchester, the trend is very similar to on the London chart. There are more rain spikes there along the bottom, but even so, it does look quite dry early on but the trend is towards more changeable conditions. The two meter temperature data tables, 11 to 15 through the first few days, so mild even in Northern England, although the trend here is also downwards as we head through the second week. The overnight lows, more dark green and a little, a little bit of blue there returning later on, so a greater risk of frost in the North. Up to Glasgow, this one is different to the first two, the positive anomaly at the 850 HPA temperature is not so well marked through the first few days. It, there is a signal for values to be above a 30 year average. You can see the fit purple line there, the ensemble mean is staying above a thick black line, but not for long. And later on, more of the runs are bringing in colder air. The big difference though is probably along the bottom, the precipitation spikes. There are far more of them than there were on the Manchester and London plots. It's a wetter picture throughout the second week and the snow row values are higher. So still a chance of falling snow in Scotland. The maximum value there is nine. It can go up to 33. So it's a low but not insignificant chance. The two meter temperature data tables follow the same theme. Lots of light green through the second week, these are the daytime maximums. Even this far north, a few runs are falling into the yellow category, so it is possible there could be some very mild conditions for time, but the trend is for temperatures to be dipping later on. Still some dark green through the days. The overnight lows, a greater risk of frost is being suggested, a significantly greater risk of frost, quite a lot of blue and the amount of it is rising as we head towards the end of the second week. Those are runs forecasting uh, below freezing point. Rainfall through the second week. These maps show the chance of five millimeters or more of rain falling on the first three days. The orange shading indicates the highest probability, that's between 60 and 80% in Western Scotland, but it's also a significant probability in Northern Ireland, Northwestern England, and Western Wales. Very, very important though, just to emphasize what these do not show is large amounts of rain falling in those areas. What they do show is the chance of large amounts of rain falling in those areas is greater than it is in Southern, Central, and Eastern counties. Moving forwards to the next three days, if anything, the signal is becoming weaker, probably because we're looking further ahead and the individual runs which uh, constitute the ensemble are going off in different directions, but still the indications are that the chance of significant amounts of rain is highest in western parts of the United Kingdom. The weather coming in from the Atlantic. The mean surface level pressure data table for York gives some more clues on how things may be developing. Early on, the signal is for higher than average pressure, but it's weakening. There's more greens coming into the columns, those runs which are more low pressure orientated, and also some blue and purple. 
only small amounts of purple though runs which are going for deep areas of low pressure to impact for weather. It's just worth remembering as well that the general theme is for high pressure to be centered close to southern Britain or to its south. Therefore, as you head northwards, pressure will be lower. So I think it's not a very strong signal going through week two, just the suggestion that we will be uh, entering a more changeable regime through the second half of it, but especially in the northern half of the United Kingdom. The GEFS snapshot mean surface level pressure chart for Friday the 7th of March has high pressure centered to the south, the southeast, with more of an Atlantic flow across the north and the west of the United Kingdom. It's fitting in with the scenario that I've just been discussing. So taking it all together, it looks like there could well be some fairly settled weather through the first half of the second week, but especially in the southern half of the United Kingdom. So to summarise, week one, outbreaks of rain clear eastwards early on. It then becomes mostly dry in the south, but there is a greater chance of rain in the north and especially the northwest. Daytime temperatures will be close to the average through the first few days but towards the end of the period it probably turns milder. With that said there will be some cold nights with frost in places. Week two mostly dry and mild or even a very mild early on. In the northwest it stays more changeable though and as we head towards the end of the week the risk of rain increases more widely and temperatures dip back towards the average. So there we have it. It would seem this year March will be coming in more like a lamb than a lion. In fact it could actually feel quite warm for a time at least in southern and central regions. Anyway I hope you've enjoyed this video as ever. If you did please consider hitting the like button and subscribe into the channel if you've not done so already. In that way, you'll not miss any of my future updates. Also, don't forget to stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.